Isn't he good? Isn't he great? Why don't you just give a shout of gladness to the Lord and say, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we are here before you to worship you, to lay our lives down, God, for people, for your name. Psalms 100 says, worship the Lord with gladness. Aren't you glad today? It says, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Why don't you begin to put praise on your lips? Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you that you died for us. Thank you for the victory, Jesus. Oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. <laughs> we love you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, Jesus. Thank you for the cross, Jesus. 
like I give you the eyes to see. I give you the eyes of faith to see. I'm giving you the ears to hear the chains. Every chain, every chain, every chain. There is nothing that I can't do. I can break every chain. I can do it all. I've already done it for you. I broke every chain at the cross. I broke every chain just for you, just for you. I conquered death, hell, and the grave. I broke the chains of death. I broke the chains of the grave. I broke the chains of sickness and disease. I broke the chains of mental health, of suicidal thoughts. I broke the chains. I break the chains of cancer. I broke the chain already. Now you just receive, now you just decree, now you just decree and declare it. Says the Lord, says the Lord, decree and declare it, decree and declare it. Break the chains, Lord. Anything that will hold you back, anything that will hold you back, from the smallest to the greatest, you decree, you declare. Lord, you broke the chains. As we just sang the song earlier about the victory, the victory has already been won on your behalf. It's already a done deal. You don't have to work for it. You just decree and declare it. You enforce the victory already that he's given you. No matter what it is, sickness, disease, heartache, financial issues, friendship, family, whatever it is, the victory has already been won. And you just decree and declare it. You enforce the victory with your mouth. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. So when you say, break every chain, you're speaking life and death. You're speaking death over those things, whatever it is, sickness, disease, whatever. You're speaking it. And you're enforcing the victory that is yours in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand. Let's give him a praise. Those of you that are watching, live stream, come on right where you're at in your home. 
Decree and declare in your home right there, right where you're at. Decree and declare and force the victory. You don't even have to be in this sanctuary because God's right there in your home. He's right there with you. Hallelujah. There is such a strong anointing, such a strong presence here. Sometimes it's hard just to stand up. It's not because of the heels. <laughs> I can run in these babies. <laughs> the anointing, man, when it's strong. Whew. His presence is here. Lord, we just love your presence. Thank you for your glory, God. Thank you that you fill this place. The Shekinah glory fills this place. Lord, we just bask in your presence. We just say thank you for being right here with us, for ministering to us so sweetly, for reminding us, God, that your word is truth, that your word is life. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to have your perfect way today. Thank you for everyone that is joining us today. Lord, in this room and those that are joining on the live stream, Thank you for the team, the worship team. Thank you for Pastor Edgar as he brings the word today. Thank you for the media team, for the camera people, for the ushers, Lord, for the greeters, God, for the office people, though everyone that has a part to play in us coming together and just honoring and worshiping and loving on you, God, thank you that you brought us together by divine appointment. Lord, you said that they'll know us by the love that we have for one another. Lord, we love the brethren. We love our sisters. We love our family, our church family. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you the glory and the honor for all these things, God. And have your perfect way in this service today. Come on, if you believe that, say amen. Give him a shout. Give him one more shout of victory. Hallelujah. Come on, those are joining on the live stream, shout right there from your house, right there in your living room. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love him this morning? Turn to wave at somebody. I know we can't greet, but we can wave. We can high five like a, you know, air, air high five. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. We're glad to see you this morning. We're glad that you joined us. Those on the live stream, we are happy to have you joining with us as well. If you're brand new and you're joining us this morning, whether it's in here, maybe someone invited you or someone that's on the live stream, there's information on the screen that you can follow. If you can text the number and say, I'm new here, we can get some information to you about Sozo Church. This is Sozo, we are Sozo, amen. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house? Amen, we are Sozo, Sozo. We are saved, healed, delivered, and we are restored. We live it every single day. Are you living the Sozo life? This pastor always closes out a service and says, keep living the Sozo life. I hope that you're living the Sozo life every single day. Salvation, deliverance, healing, restoration. God wants you to walk in that. Amen? So walk in it daily. He is awesome, isn't he? Hallelujah. Well, if you go with me to uh, the scriptures, we're going to go right into the tithe and offering. I have the honor of bringing the tithe and offering this morning, the message this morning. His word is truth. His word is life. We love his word. And everything that we do comes straight from the word. Hallelujah. In the book of 2 Timothy, Paul acknowledges and admonishes Timothy that all scripture is from God. It's God-breathed. So everything that we teach here at Sozo, one of the reasons I love my pastors so much is everything they teach, everything they, they bring is straight from the Word. Because the Word is God-breathed. It's God-inspired. And Paul admonishes Timothy. He says that Scripture is God-breathed. And it's good for all kinds of things. It's good for teaching. It's good for doctrine. It's good for correcting. It's good for rebuking. Lord knows I've been corrected and rebuked a lot of times <laughs> through my life in the Lord by the word. When I want to hold something against somebody because I feel like I am justified. And he says, you forgive, you walk in love. He rebukes, he corrects in a good way. Amen. So scripture is good for training us in those good things and the godly things. So we're going to use the scriptures. We talk about the tithe and the offering this morning because it's God-inspired. It's God-breathed. God talks about finances 
all through the Bible. He talks to you about the importance of our finances. So in Proverbs, a couple times there in Proverbs, we read in Proverbs 3.10. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. You can watch the screen. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Honor the Lord with what? Your wealth. So he, there's an expectation there. There's an expectation that you'll be wealthy. Not the way the world says that you're wealthy because they have a form of wealth, but God has his form of wealth. And that's called the blessing. There's a blessing. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. There is a blessing and there is the blessing. So Proverbs 3 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of your increase, or honor the Lord with your wealth. Verse 10, go on to verse 10. Then your barns will be filled with to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Proverbs 10.22 then, we can jump over to Proverbs 10.22, and it says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich or it enriches us, and he adds no sorrow. The worldly kind of wealth Yes, there's, there's the kind of wealth that we look at. You know, you can look on TV and see people, the way they kind of show their wealth. There's a current kind of wealth. But there's also some sorrow that comes with that. We've heard many times of people that win the lottery, they get this windfall. But because they don't know about stewardship, it'll be gone in an instant. They get holes in their pockets. And then every family member that they've never heard from in 50 years comes out of the woodwork and all of a sudden needs money. And then they start just, and they don't know how to handle it. And then next thing you know, it's gone. That's sorrow. God says, the kind of wealth that I give you, the kind of blessing that I give you, I don't add that to it. But he gives us principles to live by so that when he bestows the wealth upon us, we know how to handle it. We can steward it. How many want to be a good steward? I do. I, I, when I first came to what was Word of Faith, now Sozo, I didn't know about stewardship. And I grew up in church. I was a church kid. I grew up in church, and I had no clue about stewardship until I came here, and I started learning about stewardship and what the tithe really meant and the importance of the tithe and why we tithe and why we give in the offerings. I learned that through the years, and I'm so grateful and thankful that I learned about the blessing and having a blessing of the Lord, amen? And there's no sorrow, there's no sorrow. Doesn't mean that we don't have issues in life, but listen, God doesn't attach sorrow to my wealth that he gives me, amen? So we go over then into Malachi 3.10, it's the scripture that we use a lot. Malachi 3.9 and 10, where he says, you know, will a man rob God? And then we say, oh, how we've robbed you, God? And he says, in the tithe and the offering. And then he says, bring all the tithes, all the tithes, not just some, all. This is for those when you're just learning and you're learning about obedience of the word. And you might be in a place where you're like, you know, I, I'm just, I'm, it scares me because I'm letting go of something and, and I, I could use that for a bill. I could use it for, you know, I'm saving for, you know, whatever it is. And I, I can't let go of it. But God says, bring it all in. And then he says, and test me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven over your life. And then what does he say? And pour out for you such a blessing. He'll pour out such a blessing. He will give us the blessing of what? He goes on to say, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. That's a blessing. That the Lord himself will rebuke the devourer for your sake. When you honor him, when you obey his word, and we honor him with the tithe, he says, test me in this. I'll rebuke him. Don't worry. You don't, got, you don't even have to do it. You don't even have to hold your money and go, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. God said, I'll do that on your behalf. I was thinking about this this morning. I was watching a video last week, and it was these people going through like Glacier Park or Yellowstone, one of the two. And they're, you know, filming their way driving through. And they're filming because there was a bear, a mama bear and her two cubs, and they're on the highway. 
and the traffic is just crazy. You know, if you've ever been there, there's tra- I mean, it's t- lots of traffic, right? And so these bears are going on, they're on the highway. Well, these little tiny cubs, you think, oh, they're going to get hit. Oh, no. And so these guys are filming, and the little bear's just crying for his mama because he's on the road, and the mama bear's trying to get him off the road. And so they're like, oh, my gosh, this little bear, look at him. And they're filming him. Oh, he's so cute. He's so little, and he's just crying, crying for his mama. And he's trying to get to her, but the traffic's kind of making him disoriented. And so they kind of slowed down because the, they didn't want to hit him. And so, but they're filming, and they're like, you know, their camera's on him. And then next thing you know, that mama bear, because they slowed down, she thought that they were slowing down to get her cub. And that mama bear came charging at them, charging at a car to get that baby out, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to save my baby. The Bible, there's a scripture, I don't know where it is right now, but there's a scripture that says, it's better to come across a mama bear robbed of her cubs than to deal with a foolish person. So you come across a mama bear and her cubs, guess what? That's not gonna be a good day for you. Not a good day because that mama bear, she will fight anyone, anything to protect her babies. I've seen videos where mama bears will take on a male grizzly bear just for being around her cubs. She don't play. Mama bears don't play. So God says in Malachi, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. When I show up, I'll take care of it. You don't even have to worry about it. Just like that mama bear. She shows up, they, and they stepped on the gas, and they were like, let's get out of here. Because <laughs> they didn't know what she was going to do. She could have came right through the windshield. Who knows? She's that protective. God is that way over you. Amen. When you obey his word, when you tithe, when you just say, God, I'm going to honor you. I'm honoring your word above what I know right now. I didn't know a lot when I first came here about finances and money and stewardship, but man, when I started learning, I was so thankful that I could just rest and go, God, I thank you that you rebuked the devourer for my sake. Because guess what? There was a lot of devouring going on. I didn't know what was happening. Why can't I get ahead? Why do I feel like I'm always like, I pay the bill and I got nothing. What is happening? And then when I started learning about stewardship and obeying God's word and taking God at his word and trusting him and walking in that kind of faith, guess what? He started rebuking the devourer for my sake. And there ain't no sorrow with the kind of wealth that God gives me and my husband, and I'm so thankful. So today, as you get ready to to sow, since we're not passing buckets, get out your phone, and we're giving through push pay. If you're writing a check, there's the envelope uh, station out there. You can put your envelope in there. But if you got your phone, if you got your offering ready, you can drop in after service. Maybe you've already done that. But let's have something in our hand. You can have a point of contact. Just hold your phone if you got your push pay. Let's honor the Lord with our tithe. And we walk in the blessing of Deuteronomy 28. There's the blessing. He says, you'll be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. You'll be blessed going in and blessed going out. How many want that? That's the the blessing of the Lord. There is a blessing when we tithe and honor and obey him. He says, I'll open the windows of heaven over your behalf and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake and nations will call you blessed. The blessing of Deuteronomy 28 says, you'll be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. You'll be blessed going in, blessed going out. The fruit of your room will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. That's the blessing. How many want to walk in a blessing and the blessing? That's a double portion. Hallelujah. All right. So let's get ready to give this morning. Those that are watching on our live stream, you can give on your screen. You'll see that there is ways to give. Push pay. You can send in checks if you still write checks. You can send in checks. You can... Do all kinds of different things. But everyone, let's just get something in our hand. Let's honor the Lord this morning. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that we can live by the truth of your word, the life of your word. Lord, I thank you for every giver this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you promised that you would rebuke the devourer for their sake. So now, Lord, any financial circumstances anything that's blocking them. Lord, I just thank you as they honor you today, you're rebuking the devour for their sake. They walk in the blessing of Deuteronomy 28 because they honor and obey your word. 
do it on their behalf, Lord. You said that we can test you in this. So, Lord, we honor you today with our wealth, and we thank you that you don't add any sorrow to it. We love you. We bless you. We bless every ministry of this house that goes out and beyond these four walls as well. Thank you for the opportunity to give this morning. We love you, Lord. Bless every giver today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, let's turn our attentions to the screen. Here's what we got for Sozo News. Sozo Church, Pastor Sam Segunda will be joining us September 6th at our 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1.30 p.m. Spanish service. Make sure to mark your calendar for this powerful service. Due to COVID-19, the men's retreat has been unfortunately canceled. But I don't want you to frown, I need you to smile because we have a phenomenal event coming for you. The Sozo Men's Fireside Weekend Event. September 25th and 26th. Us men are gonna be able to come together and sharpen each other in a weekend of fellowship and hanging out together, strengthening our bond in Christ. Can't wait for it. If you want more information, make sure to reach out to Mr. Brian Pope at sozomensministry at gmail.com or feel free to give us a call, all right? More information on this event coming soon. Be sure to follow Pastor Marlando on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Marlando Jordan. And follow Pastor Megan on Facebook and Instagram at Hey Maggie Baby. Also, if you have any prayer requests or praise reports, be sure to email them to prayer at sozochurch.com. Once again, that's prayer at sozochurch.com. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Good morning, Sozo Church. How's everyone doing today? Excited? Ready? What a powerful time during worship. I have uh, two more announcements before I forget them. I know Stacy would remind me. She wouldn't let me get off the pulpit before I say these announcements. So one of them uh, that I want to tell you about is uh, Dave Freeponds. How many knew Dave Freeponds? What a blessing he was for our house, those that knew him you know, that had that friendship. And many, you know, were devastated by what happened and that he's no longer here with us, but we know where he's at. He's up in the mountain with the Lord. So we're going to be celebrating his life. There's going to be a service, and there's going to be a limitation to the people, the amount of people that will be here, but you could also be able to connect with us online. And this will be held Thursday, August 20th. So write it down, August 20th at 6 p.m., and we're going to be live streaming it live through Sozo Church or the YouTube channel. The other one uh, is kind of, of what's been going on when we've been seeing the whole thing about shutdowns and things that have been happening. So there was an update on Monday that uh, the church is no longer able to stay inside physically because it got reverted. But there was other things that were able to go into phase two. So because of that, we're going to be having services outside. So we'll be having service next Sunday, August 23rd, outside. I want you to, you know, keep our pastor in prayers. I mean, because honestly, this is a difficult time. I mean, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, people will say something. People have opinion like they have noses. But you will never, li listen to what I'm saying, you will never be at one point where everybody's in agreement. So where right now, what I'm asking you, let's back up our pastor. Because there's times where there's decisions, you don't know what, how to, what you're going to do at the moment, but we got to lead, have the direction from the Lord and what he wants us to do in the moment. So I encourage you, keep praying for our pastors. Keep praying for them. Right now, 
the pastors, and I feel, I feel like I'm saying it as, you know, other pastors, but, and that I'm not doing it, but it, it's, it's a whole different dynamic right now as far as what has to happen as, as a pastor, what, they're going, what everybody's going through right now. Every state's a little bit different. So, like I said, just please keep our pastors in prayer. Pray for them daily, every day, every day. I'm going to ask you if you can go ahead and stand up, please. We're going to pray, open up in prayer before we get into the message. Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads. Father, we just thank you this moment. We thank you for the time, Father God. As you begin to pour your spirit, your presence, your glory, Father God, through the worship, I thank you you will continue to do the same, O oh Lord, through the message, God. I thank you right now, Father God, that it's going to penetrate. I thank you for what it's going to do already, Lord. We thank you. We thank you in this moment. We lift up your name, Lord, that there is no other name or, or any other name above or higher than your name, than the name of Jesus. We give you the glory and the honor, Father God, of what you will do. For it is all for you, Lord. I'm just a vessel in your hands, Father God. So I ask that you speak through me, that you would anoint my lips, O oh God. Because I am weak, but it is you who strengthens me, O oh Lord. I thank you for this, and I ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. So as we were worshiping and Maxine was leading us through that song, Break Every Chain, you know, I, I had a, like a glimpse of a vision that they're trying to put chains on the doors of the church. There's going to come a time where we have to stand up. Listen to what I'm saying. And this is where I'm going to, I'm going to call each and one of you to back up Pastor Marlando. If that time comes, I want you to back them up. Because, like I said, the, the church has to be more united right now. How is it that some other things can go to phase two but not the church? How is it that, that all these other things can continue to progress into the next phase, but the church is reverting back even more? But it's because they're trying to put the chains on the church. They're trying to put the chains on the church. You're fighting should start on your knees and end on your knees. When we worship, our worship is war. Our shout is war. When you speak, that is war. As long as it's aligned to the word of God, that is war. When you fast, that is war. And this is the time that we need to stand up and we need to fight. We are called to fight, so you got to tell that Pharaoh to let his people go. You have to tell that Herod of this age that we will not compromise. We have to tell the spirit of Jezebel that we're not intimidated. We have to tell that spirit of Ahab that you, we're not going to tolerate it anymore. Because that's what has happened. There's been a spirit of Ahab within the church that they tolerate. They're tolerable to everything else. But yet, when it comes to the direction of God, what's God wanting us to lead us to and do? We have excuses. I believe the church has gotten comfortable in not coming to church. That church doesn't matter if the doors are open or not. Because if there was a true desire for the church to stay open, people would be fighting. People would be protesting. There are things that we should be protesting instead of other things. But for the kingdom things, and I'm here to waken you up, that we begin to fight, that we begin to make war. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to sit down and just unfold my hands and let everything go on. I'm here to make war. I'm here to make war. Christians need to have a backbone more than ever. And stop being jellyfish Christians that have no spine. We need to wake up. Because our liberties are taken away, are being taken away as we see it right now. We don't know what's coming in the fall. But if another shutdown comes, are you ready? Are you prepared? And you know what the Lord was showing me was this. He's like, do you notice that there's, 
There's these periods in between of grace, mercy, where all of a sudden he begins to let things flow and open up. But you know what happens? People begin to revert back to their old ways. Instead of really waking up, instead of really seeking God, it's time the church wakes up because he's purifying the church right now. This is the, the, one of the words he kept saying to me last night. I'm purifying the church right now, and he's through, doing it through COVID. And we don't know what's going to happen later on because things are going to progress. We're not going to go back to, oh, kumbaya, everything's fine. War is going to continue. War is going to continue. But I like the heart of David. Listen to this. Psalms 84 verse 2. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. We need to react that way. That we long for the courts that our soul even faints. How is it that we can stay comfortable and say, oh, yeah, it's okay. I can, I'll watch online. But have you noticed that people watch the services online when it's convenient to them? Oh, no, I'm too busy right now in this hour when church is going on. It's too busy. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. There's a time, yeah, for vacation. I'm not saying that. But there comes a time where we have to do what God is calling us to do. We need to react like David. We have to rebuke that demonic spirit of Ahab and Jezebel. Men need to begin to rise up and lead their homes. Quit tolerating that spirit of Jezebel in your house. When all of a sudden you let you, and listen, because I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers. Because there are times where you are, the women are leading the homes when it's the men that should be leading the homes. And then you, you wonder why everything's so out of order. Biblically, that's what, it, what the Lord says. He, he put the man to lead the house. You bring the bacon. Quit being the babysitter for your kids while, you're, while your wife is out in the workforce. And I'm not saying women can't work. But when the, the role is the opposite, what is going on? You lead your home, you bring, them, you bring your family to church, you fight for them, you fight with them, you show them how to pray, you go in the closet room, you bring your kids in the closet room. Sometimes, you, yeah, you got to get them off their phones and fight, show them how to fight. There's times where I'm grabbing my kids and I was like, you guys are coming in with me. You're going to pray with me in the closet room. And then the next thing that they're saying, Lord, uh, Dad, he's like, when are we going to go and be in the presence of the Lord? He's like, when are we going to go pray? That's what I want. I want you to have a desire. I want you to have a desire for God. More than your Fortnite, more than your Call of Duty, whatever you call. And there's some of you that are already with mustache and beard. You got to put away your games and pick up the Bible. Let go of those things. Let go of the childish things. A question that people ask is, normally is because they can't see it. They're like, is, is there really a spirit realm? And I'm going to get to my title in a minute. I'm just getting through my introduction. <laughs> so there's times where people are asking, is, is there such a thing as a spirit realm? Because they can't see it. They can't see it. But, you know, one thing that I remembered about as I was, the Lord was giving me this message because this is the first uh, message that I taught in this series in the Spanish service. And uh, one of the things that he was showing me is like, do you remember when you were a kid when something would scare you? I was like, yeah, Lord, I remember that. He's like, or when you watched a horror movie and you shouldn't have been watching that stuff. That's why don't be entertaining those horror movies. They're opening doors, they're gateways. But one of the things that we would do as a kid, because your parents would go to sleep and next thing you know you were in that room. And all of a sudden, you started to hear things that you would never hear. And you're like, oh, you saw a shadow. I'm like, oh, I just, now I, I just saw something. And your mind started to play certain things because of what you watched that opened that door. But what we would do normally was like we would cover ourselves up. And you would cover yourself up because you would think that if you can't see it, if you can't see it, then, it, then it's not true. But that's what the enemy like, likes to do. He wants to keep you blindfolded to the things that are happening in the invisible world. 
So the subject of the message is war. War in the invisible world. I did two parts. I added a little bit of the nuggets from the second part into the, this one so you can get a little bit of it. And in the Spanish, I'm teaching war in the natural world. And then later on, I'm going to move in into the war within because there are three phases. You're fighting in the spiritual realm. You're fighting in the natural, but there is also a war within you, a war in between your two ears. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says this, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. There's a conflict. There's a conflict going on. As You, you may not even feel it at moments. You might, you're not going to see it unless God reveals it to you. But there's a conflict going. And the conflict is increasing right now. As we speak, there's a, the, it's increasing right now, more than ever, more than ever. And just because some don't believe, it doesn't mean that it, it stops to exist. The spirit realm is still there. The invisible world is more real. The invisible world is more real than the visible world. You may be like, well, what would you smoke, pastor? No, Listen. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. Those who use these things, those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them. For this world as we know it will soon pass away. So many are so attached to the things that are here that you could tangibly touch, see with the natural eye. But that's why it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Why? You have to seek those things first. Everything else is going to come into play. But some people have it reverted backwards. And they want to go after the natural things. Instead of the heavenly things. The cultural, the kingdom culture things. There are two worlds. The visible and the invisible world. And just as there is two worlds. There are also two realms. There's the natural and the supernatural. The atmosphere has everything to do with what you want it to be created in it. And there are three atmospheres. For those that are taking, them, taking notes, you can write them down. One is there's a personal atmosphere. It's what you create in your home, in the closet room, wherever you're praying. There, there's, a, there's an atmosphere that you can create. The second one is a corporate. A corporate atmosphere. It's kind of like here within the church, when we're worshiping, when there's prayer, when there's fasting, something begins to change corporately. And then the third one is regional. It's like when you go into an, uh, another country, you already feel something shifted completely. Why? Because the atmosphere. When I go to Mexico, something shifts. I could, I could feel it. I went to Vegas the other day. There were certain parts even in, this, uh, in a certain street. Where something shift, something shifted, something shifted. But there are things that if you if we want the glory of God, we gotta prepare the atmosphere. We gotta prepare the atmosphere where He would want to dwell in. And I know there's times where you're coming through the, through the week. I had this. I had warfare. I had this. Well, that's good. But you come and get your praise on. You come and shout unto God. You come to glorify God. Bring your family. Worship. The atmosphere you tolerate will be the one that you stay in. Listen, you're not called to be a thermometer. You're called to be a thermostat. Don't just learn how to discern the atmosphere, but learn how to change it. I'll repeat it again. Don't just learn how to discern the atmosphere, but learn how to change it. Because some just want to learn how to discern it. And that's it. But they don't know what to do with what they just discerned. So they just stay quiet. They don't do nothing. But the moment you step in somewhere, that, that atmosphere has to change. That's how the, the authority you have to walk in. That's how you, be, you have to be assured of yourself that it is greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. That's when you got to begin to decree the word. Pray in tongues underneath your breath. But begin to change that atmosphere. And let me tell you this. If for some reason something's so strong there that you can't change, 
don't sit there and just tolerate then leave because many sit there and tolerate it and next thing you know then that's when a door an open door comes and then you fall all of a sudden yeah there was a family party and then all of a sudden next thing you know they gave you a cruise light they gave you a corona or whatever but you were there tolerating it, tolerating it. Change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. The invisible world. So many things are happening. And you know, the, the way I look at it, it's kind of ironic that people are afraid of a virus they can't see. But yet they don't believe in the divine protection. Where, where are we at? Where's our faith? Where's our faith? And I'm telling you, it's because so you dig deep inside. Because when you open to that spirit of fear, what you're going to do, you're becoming susceptible to that, to, that, to that disease, to that virus. But if you walk around, that thing ain't going to touch me. You plead the blood. And you believe in the blood. You believe that you have authority. That thing ain't going to touch you. I'm around it all the time at work. And it doesn't. It doesn't get me scared because I go into somebody that's positive. I know that thing ain't going to touch me and going to touch my family. And that's what I keep confessing. That's what I keep speaking over them. That's what I keep prophesying over them. And many of you, that's what you need to do. Quit tolerating that spirit of fear. Lord, the Lord didn't give you that spirit of fear, but of sound mind, of self-discipline. Begin to, begin to use the word of God. That's the weapon. That's the weapon. We have to understand that everything invisible or visible was created for a purpose. Faith activates the things that, are, that happen in the invisible, in the visible world, so the things can become in the physical world, so that it'll, it'll appear. You, you, cause it, you call it, you speak it into existence, and then you'll see it manifest. But that's where you got to get your faith at. you got to take it to that level. You think God, when he was creating the world, he was going to doubt what he was speaking? When he was creating the world, he spoke the word, and it, and it created things. What does the Bible say? That it is he that is living in us. He made us in his image and likeness. So if he made us in his image and likeness, begin to act like it. Begin to speak like him. Smell like him. Walk like him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says this, By faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. Here it is. So that the things which are seen were not made with things which are visible. He spoke it into existence. Begin to create things in the spirit realm. So then you begin to have them in the physical world. One understands them through our faith, and just as one believes in them, it makes them manifest in the natural. Faith is something powerful. It could touch both worlds, the invisible and the visible. It touches both realms. Faith does. That's why it's so powerful. Hebrews 11, chapter 1, faith shows that the reality of what we hope for, it is the evidence of the things we cannot see. What does what Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says? That we can't even... Please, God, without faith, because with faith we believe that he exists and he moves and he seeks, I mean, and, 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 he, and he rewards those accordingly who seek him. Faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things... We can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. You know, in the New King James Version, you know, this scripture is talking about four things. But in the New King James Version, version it says, it changes a couple on the words. The wording is a little bit different. But it's talking about thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. There's four realms. Paul's talking about different levels. If you go back to the book of Daniel, chapter 10, what was Daniel faced with? He was fasting, praying. He was trying to shift certain things in that region. 
But there was hindrance because there was a principality in that region. Even though he couldn't see it, there was a cosmic war going on. And that, that fast broke the back of the enemy because soon, soon that's when he released what? What he was praying for. But it says there was a, a prince of Persia there. And then later on in that chapter, there's another prince, the prince of Greece. So there's territorial spirits in different regions. And they're the ones that govern. They're the ones that are sending the other smaller demons to go fest, to go do that. That's why the, I, I know that people say, oh, the greater level, the greater, uh, the, greater the, the demons you will face, the greater the attack. Well, how about the greater level that you go, the greater that you're walking in the Lord, the greater will be the things that God gives you, the anointing he gives you, the, the word that you begin to speak begins to change, that when you begin to prophesy, things begin to happen in the atmosphere. That's what we need to confess, not that these demons are going to be, oh, you're going to be fighting these demons. That are, I don't care about them. I care about who's with me. And if God is for me, who can be against me? The invisible world cannot be attacked in the physical realm, meaning with tactics of the world. They have to be supernatural. They have to come from the Lord. And you need to know how to use them. When you really have a revelation of this, then you will know how you're supposed to fight. Listen to this, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 through 17. When the servant of the man of God got up early in the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried out to Elsha. Don't be afraid, Elsha told him. For there are more on your side than on, on theirs. Then Elsha prayed, Oh, Lord, open the eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw in the hillside, and Elsha was filled and uh, around Elsha was filled with horses, chariots of fire. You had two people that were able to see in different, that one was seen in the natural, the other one was able to see in the supernatural. The moment you begin to see in the supernatural, things begin to change. Your perspective changes. The way you speak changes. The way you fight through things changes. Because as the scripture says, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but people will take it that way. Oh, he offended me. And then next thing you know, you show by your expression that you're so mad at him. And you're coming to church all mad. Oh, the pastor offended me. The pastor did this. Get over it. You want certain things to change? Pray. That's how we fight. Like I said, your fighting starts on your knees and it should end on your knees. But many times it starts on our knees, but we never go back on our knees to thank God. For what he already did. Th thanking him in advance. Thank you because of what you did. Thank you because you heard me, Lord. You heard my cry. You heard my plead. You fought for me, Lord. Things began to change. This story tells us of two people, like I said. One saw in the natural while the other one saw in the spirit realm. And that's what the enemy does. The scripture says also that he has blinded the people. So that they don't see. You got to pray that those spiritual blinds fall off. That those blinds will fall off so that you can be able to see in the spirit realm. As long as you have your eyes closed in the spirit realm, you will never know who is for you. 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 19 through 22, something else happened in this story. Then Micaiah continued. Listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him. He was able to have a glimpse on the right and on his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Galeen so that he can be killed? There were many suggestions. And finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. And how will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. It was 400 prophets that began to prophesy lies. Prophet lies. You may think that, oh, prophets always know. Put everything to the test. It tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20. Put every word to the test. Every word that's even prophetically sown into you, put it to the test. 
If you're not sure what, what I mean, uh, that it's something that God has given you, put it on the shelf. Wait on it. Sit on it. Sit on it. Because so many people move because they got a prophetic word, but the timing wasn't right. I'm not saying that the prophet missed it, but the timing wasn't right. It wasn't yet. It wasn't ready. He was preparing you. He was molding you. Because you look at 1 Kings chapter 13, and something else happens there. And I'll give it to you, uh, that as homework. Go read it. There was two prophets. There was one prophet from Bethel, and the other one prophet was a prophet from Judah. God had already spoken to the prophet not to go back the way he came, and he decided to steal. Uh, well, he ended up was going the direction that God was telling him, but then he came across this prophet that gave him lies and told him that the Lord had told him certain things. So he ended up going back. Well, that cost him his life. If God has given you a word, it is God who gave it to you, not man. It is God, the living God. Listen to what I'm telling you. Because sometimes you leave what God has given you for what, the, what, the, what a man gives you. And when, when a, if a prophet brings you a word, it's usually something that God has been dealing with you already. And all you got to do is, okay, now this is confirming that which he gave me. There's things that the prophets have told me that have confirmed it. It hasn't happened, and I'm not moving it to make it happen. I'm letting it sit there. You, Lord, you'll know when it's time. You'll know what has to happen. You'll know what. I just leave it there. I don't touch it. I worry about what God wants me to do right now and be obedient what he's telling me to do right now in this moment. And let him mold me. Because we don't have it all together. I don't have it all together. I don't have it all together. And yeah, there are other people that may have the, the word of God so memorized they have it, but it's head knowledge, but it's never been a heart revelation. There has been never been a transformation, and that's why there's no unction, there's no power, there's no anointing, they're dry as a whistle, but just with head knowledge. Listen to what I'm telling you. That spirit was a demonic, it was a demonic spirit, it was a demon. And you could say, well, how, how did it have access to the throne? How did it have access to the heavenly courts? Well, remember in, uh, in Job chapter 1, verse 6, before the testing came for Job, all of a sudden Satan appeared. And the Lord asked him, oh, where have you been, Satan? He's like, I've been everywhere patrolling the earth, seeing what's happening. Ah, and he has access because he's the accuser of the brethren. It says that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. He's the accuser. He's the accuser. Or uh, verse 10. Satan's accuser. Another scripture that I'll give you, Zechariah chapter 3. You remember that the priest Joshua show, was in, in the heavenly court. And then the accuser was there too. And he was complaining to, to the Lord about that he had garments that were stained. He was re right, ready there to accuse. That's what he does. He's ready there to, to accuse you. But what happened? They said, wasn't this, wasn't this the brand that was, that, that was plucked out of the fire? That was plucked out of the fire. Yeah, I was, I was in the fire back in my BC days, but God plucked me out of there. God took me out of there. And now I'm here to set people on fire. I'm here that they get a passion for God. I'm here that they will have a zeal for God. Why? Because he plucked me out of there. I know where he took me out of. I know where I was headed. You can never forget that. Always treasure it. Make it a memorial. A memorial. But so many times... What God did, we began to use it, we began to see it as something ordinary. We began to see it as something ordinary. But you always got to lay a hold of the testimony of what God had done. Some of you are young, and God is doing amazing things. Just keep going. There's no quitting. What are we going to go back to? In Christianity, Christianity isn't for the weak. Christianity isn't for the weak. And things are going to get tougher. Things are going to get tougher. Things are get, we're going to meet with more warfare. And if you can't stand right now, what will it be later? You have to put everything to the test, like I said. It was in Exodus chapter 17 when Moses was fighting the Malachites. He was fighting in the natural realm, but also in the spirit realm. Because the moment, because he had his hands up, 
He had his hands up, and the moment he brought his hands down, what happened? He started to lose. The enemies began to gain foot. That's why you can't let your guard down. That's why you can't stop worshiping God. That's why you can't stop reading the word of God. That's why you can't stop coming to the church. Because that's where you will have a herd. That's where you will have an errand. That when you fall, somebody will pick you up. Somebody will be alongside of you. You weren't created to walk this, this world by yourself. You need somebody alongside of you. You're not supposed to be in isolation. Why do you think the enemy has fought so much to keep everybody isolated? Isolated from the church. Isolated from one another. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. How much longer are we going to fall for these lies? How much longer are we going to fall for these lies? You may ask, why am I confronted with so much warfare? Sometimes you don't understand the warfare you're in because you can't, like I said, see it physically. But when you're faced with the spiritual warfare, it is an indication that the enemy doesn't want you to gain foothold of your promised land or the promises. It's an indication that you're walking where you're supposed to be walking. When you're faced with spiritual warfare, it makes you question things. And it also, listen to what I'm going to tell you, and it also opens your eyes to something that you were ignoring. If you become very sensitive of why you're, fight, you're fighting certain warfares, Maybe it's an open door that you opened up. And it's not always God's fault. Because that's what everybody says. They lift up a fist to God. Why this? Why that? Why did my, my, my loved one pass away? Why? We live in a fallen world. Why this? Why that? My business? Why this? Oh, why did this happen in my marriage? Why? There was an open door. Not everything is God's fault. Because that's what everybody says. Oh, it's God's fault. No, there, there, there are things that God will test you. He won't tempt you because people get those things mixed around. He will test you. He will put you to the test. And if you don't pass it, if you flunk it, you will continue to be there until you pass it. Until he gives you that whoop in the behind and, okay, now you can go. You passed. The battle you ignore will be the battle you never win. The battle you ignore will be the battle you never win. You have to understand that while we're here, we're going to face battles. We're going to face warfare. We're going to face tribulation. You have to face it. You have to fight it. Not your neighbor. Not your pastor. Not your leaders. You have to get up and you have to fight. Because sometimes others want other people to fight their battles when they're not even willing to fight them themselves. You have to pray. You have to fight too. Listen, when you don't face warfare, it's because you have become comfortable. When you don't face warfare, you have become comfortable. And you got to be careful and examine yourself. You might be walking alongside the enemy and holding hands and not even know it. Listen to what I'm telling you. In the invincible world, there, was, there will always be conflict. There's always war. And that's why we got to make war every day. Your promised land is connected with war. Why do you think the Lord gave pastor, our pastors the year of conquest? The year of, of conquest. Who would have known that we would have started 2020 with a bang? <laughs> and it sure has been, huh? Listen to this, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Everybody knows the scripture. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And, and listen, wh what does it say afterwards? And the violent take it by force, right? Listen to what this commentator said. From the days of John the Baptist until now, there has been an extraordinary rush of people pressing in all, on all form, all sides. Eager for a blessing. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, figuratively speaking. In that the people were so thronging to hear the gospel that they resembled an army trying to besiege a city. And the violent take it by force. The people entering the kingdom were not violent literally, but their eagerness to see the coming of the Messiah was so overwhelming that it was as if they were attacking a city and beating down the doors until they entered. Joshua entered the promised land. 
You have to conquer your promised land. You have to conquer that territory. You have to conquer this year. You have to conquer the year of 2020. Don't let the year of 2020 conquer you. I don't know who I'm speaking to you. You may be like, oh, we're already halfway through the year or, or past it. And I'm still through this fight. I'm through, through, through this battle. I keep fighting. Well, keep fighting. Don't give up. Victory's right there. You know that the Lord already told us that we're going to win. We know that the gates of hell shall not prevail over the church. So why are we worrying? Why are we worrying? But my question is, why aren't you fighting? The violent must take it by force. Joshua chapter 13 verse 1. When Joshua was an old man, the Lord said to him, You are growing old and much land remains to be conquered. What, he was, what, what was the Lord telling him? I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your age is. There are some fathers here. There are some fathers here. And I'm talking about white hair, cotton hair. People with wisdom. People that have been in the trenches. People that need your wisdom. People that need your knowledge. People that need a father figure. Rise up too. Because we need you. We need you in this hour. We need you to fight. We need you to lead this generation too. To grab a hold of the younger generation. And say I'm here with you. I'm fighting with you. I haven't left you. I've been for you. But you just haven't seek me. We have to grab together. We have to grab by our hands. We have to stop having these generational gaps. That's why there's, there's an abortion of spiritual sons and daughters. Aborted, they're everywhere. And we're going to give an account. We're going to give an account. What did we do? While we were here. What did we do? How should I react? If the enemy brings war. Again. If the enemy brings war against you. It's not for you to be with your arms crossed. It's to make war then. You want war. I'm going to give you war. Every time you, you come and tempt me. I'm going to give you war. Every time something comes. I'm going to make war. I'm going to worship more. That's what happened when I got tested with my, with my son. When he was in the womb. I was like, you're telling me these lies? You're coming and attacking me? All you're going to make me do? I was like, I'm going to fight more. I'm going to kneel more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to worship more. I'm going to read the word more. That's how you make war, not complaining. Complaining ain't going to change nothing in the atmosphere. You're going to create it even worse. You have to understand that you, you're in a fight. You have to fight for your children. You have to fight for your grandchildren. You have to fight to leave that legacy, a legacy that will last, a legacy that when you're no longer here, that legacy is continuing on. But have we forgotten what it is to pass something on to our kids? You have to fight. Some don't break the chains because they continue to grasp that which keeps them enslaved. Let go of that beer can. Listen to what I'm telling you. Let go of that beer can. Let go of that bottle. Let go of that joint. And pick up the word. That's why you can't let go of those things. Because you have been picking up those things more than, than reading the word. Because if you've been reading the word, if you've been stewing in the word, you've been marinating it. In it. You will know how easy those things are. Those chains will begin to break off supernaturally. Chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. Things begin to change in the atmosphere. But that's why some people can't conquer it. They can't conquer it. But we got to conquer. We got to conquer this year. We got to conquer what's in front of us. There has to be an inward desire to change. The moment you have a revelation of that, it unlocks everything because it's revelation. It's one word that God gives you. That changes and unlocks everything. That's why you can't read the Bible just like any other book. You got to eat it. You got to read it. Let the, let the pages fall off. Let them rip off. Let them do whatever it has to do. You, you chew on them. You, you bury your face in it. You pray. You seek. You wet these pages with tears. You seek God. You hunger. 
how you react will demonstrate on how you know. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revert back. How you react will demonstrate if you know how to use what God has given you. Because everything of what we see right now is a shadow of how you reacted. It's a result of how you reacted. The Lord has given you the keys already. He's given you the keys to succeed. And he's given you the keys. And I'm not talking about in the, the business side or whatever. I'm not prosperity gospel or whatever you want to go. And it's not that. I'm talking about being able to be effective in the kingdom of God. And that was another thing that the Lord told me. He's removing corporate America from within the churches. Because that's what has happened. Corporate America has came into the church. The church wasn't meant for that. The church wasn't meant for that. Let's keep the things of God holy. Let's keep the things of God holy. We have weapons. Psalms 44 verse 5 says this. Through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. David had a revelation of this. You have an armor, and it's not for looks. It's an armor for you to use. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us about the armor, and he gave us an armor that's complete. Each weapon has a purpose. And sometimes some realize that when they take out the sword... That it's not even really a sword, but a pocket knife. Because they haven't been in the Word. But when you're in the Word, it's sharpening the blade. When you get a, with another believer, it's sharpening the other side of the blade. It just keeps sharpening, keeps sharpening. Next thing you know, when you're, when you're fighting, you begin to see how things begin to change. Why? Because now you know the authority that you're walking in. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in pulling of strongholds and destroying arguments. It's time to destroy arguments. Don't leave them up there. Don't leave them up there. Don't, don't let it be like an incubator because next thing you know, it'll begin to hatch eggs and it creates one thing after another. Let's fight. Let's fight. Let's fight. Although the armor is something that you cannot see in the natural, it's something that you have in the supernatural, that you have in the spirit realm. Declare with me this, the weapons I have. No, 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 no. Let's say it again. You guys aren't even awakened. I want you to believe in what you're declaring. Declare with me. The weapons I have. There we go. Are powerful, are powerful to destroy, to destroy strongholds, strongholds, to destroy, to destroy arguments. arguments. So today I declare, today I declare that, I that I break those chains, that the yoke breaks, the yoke breaks. because greater is, he greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. If you believe that, I want you to stand up. I'll close with, with this scripture, Psalms 144, verse 1. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. I know Wes would like, was going to love that scripture. He has prepared. He has prepared us for battle. He has prepared for battle. Prepared us for battle. Now I want to ask you, are there any militant people here? Are there any people here that are willing to fight? If you're willing to fight, I want you to come here on the altar. If you're willing to fight, I want you to come in the altar. And if you're alongside your family, I want you to hold their hands, your kids. If your kids aren't here, begin to believe them in the spirit realm that you're holding their hands. Because this is how we're going to fight. This is how we're going to fight. We can't let 
the chains be on our doors. We can't let those chains be on the doors of our houses either because they even went against that too where you couldn't even meet in your own home. Who are they to tell us what we can and can't do when the word of God says something on the contrary? We have to stand up. There's coming a time where we got to rise up and we got to fight. But we need people that are going to be militant, people that are going to begin to fight, that are going to wage war, that are going to begin to speak. They're going to come against that spirit of this age and say enough is enough. But the Lord is coming back for a bride without blemish, a bride that's being purified, a bride that he's preparing in this moment right now, right now, right now. Now, uh, this is what I want you to do as Maxine leads us and to break every chain. I want you. I want you to fight for your kids. I want you to fight for your household. I want you to fight for those dreams. I want you to fight. I want you to make, to begin to wage war. And I'm going to pray. God's going to saturate the place. He's already beginning to do, do it. He's already beginning to do it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Maxine. And I'm going to be praying. Lift up your hands. Wage war. Wage war. Lord, saturate this place. Let the heavens open. Let the heavens open. Let the heavens open. Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. You pull. You promote. You promote. You don't need a man to lay hands on you. It is God Almighty. It is God Almighty. Yes. Hey, shout. Shout. Break. Break things. Hey, I'm going to leave a legacy for my kids, for my grandchildren, for my children, children. Yes, shout, shout, break every chain. Yes, there's an army, there's an army here, there's an army here. Fight, 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 press, 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 press. I don't hear you. Rise in, yeah. Lord, oh, get it, oh, don't get it, let it, oh, get it, oh, get it, oh, let your glory, Lord. Yeah, come on, press, press, press. Hey, press, fight, fight. Begin to use your sword. Use your sword. Use your sword. Come on, Yeah. You want those chains to fall? You fight! You fight! You fight! You fight! Hey! Fight! 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 Fight!
you hear the chains breaking off your life? Do you hear it? Yeah. We walk by faith and not by sight, not by our feeling. Come on, Maxine. Come on. But in the spirit, I hear the chains that have been broken off of your life. Every life. Every life, every heart, every home that's standing up here this morning, I hear the chains that's fallen off of your life. Come on, give them glory! fight we have to fight yeah. we have to fight the kingdom of God suffers violence but the violent take it by force it's time to take it it's time to take what belongs to us these tri cities belong to us these tri cities belong to us and it's time we act like it it's time like we act like it let's fight let's fight let's fight Fight with your shout. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. I know everybody's here. I want to do one more prayer if there's somebody here that has never made the Lord as their Savior, as the Lord of their life. I know in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, for whoever, for all who have sinned have fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody fall, everybody's short. Everybody falls at one point. But either you can fall, but we'll even be with the Lord, and He picks you up, He strengthens you. Yeah, there are things we face. But the Lord wants to touch you. He's drawing you today. Why? Because He cares for you. He loves you. He sent His Son for you. I want you to go ahead and close your eyes. Go ahead and bow your heads. And I want to ask if there's somebody here who has never made their Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Two, three. Is there somebody here? I want you to raise your hand up high. Wave at me. Is there someone here that has never made Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Is there someone here? So this tells us that we, we need to fight more for those out there that don't know him. We have to witness more. We have to evangelize more. Because what we've received, it's not meant for us just to keep. 
but to share it with others. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you that you have, that your presence goes before them, Father God, that you fight for them, that through this week, Lord, they will wage war. I ask them that even to wake them up in the middle of the night, if that's what you want, Father, and that they will begin to wage war, that they will press in, that they will pray, that they will seek you, that they will fall before their faces, Father God, before your feet, and ask for more of you, Lord. More of you and less of us, Lord. I thank you for them, Lord. I ask that you protect them. I plead your precious blood upon each and one of them that there's a form of protection. There's a hedge of protection around each and one of you. Begin to believe it. Begin to speak it. Speak and begin to believe in the power of the blood. Speak the name of Jesus. Speak. Confess. Shout the name of Jesus. You know what? That's what I want, want, I want to do right now. Let's shout, when I count to three, the name of Jesus. Loud, like we mean it. Loud, like we're going to move. We're moving to gain that territory. We're moving to receive that territory. Ready? Are you guys ready? Okay. One, two, three. Jesus! 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 Jesus, 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 this church belongs to you. Jesus, Jesus, these dry cities are yours. Jesus, 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 yeah. Yeah, Jesus, the glory and honor to you, O oh God, Almighty. Oh Well, thank you. It was an honor to be here with you guys. Like I said, I'll remind you again, be praying for our pastors and be ready to make war. Make war, make war. All right. God bless you guys.